Good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday morning. Um, I'm just going to get out of the way here and I'm going to invite forward Debbie and Jen, our council president and vice president, and uh, what an exciting Sunday it is for us at Living Lord. Do you hear me? Yeah, good, good, good. Well, so exciting to see everybody this morning on this wonderful morning. And when you think about everything, everything that's come together, precisely as it has over all these years, and you think about where we are at this particular moment, in this particular church building, at this particular time, all that was set in motion before, long before we've been sitting here. It's just a God thing, yes? Very much, very much. I, I just made a short list of some things to just ponder for a moment. You know, there were people here, and that people made a church. There were people here even before Pastor Roy and Terry came. And then they called a pastor, and Pastor Roy came with Terry. So there were charter members. There was Pastor Roy and this wonderful foundation that he's left that he's built, and it's all about grace. There was Pastor Heidi and the mark that she left, the impact that she brought as God called her to this church. Then there was Pastor Jim and his calling to this congregation. And together with Pastor Roy, what they continued to build in a foundation. Then there's all the leadership that's been involved with this church over the many, many years. A lot of you sitting right here in the congregation. Then all the lay leaders and all the volunteers. And if I asked you to stand, it'd probably be, whoa. You know, you'd hear that swoosh as everybody stands up because it's all of us. It's all of you right here. All the different ministries that we've had to serve the world, to do God's calling for us. The awesome interims, right? The transition Pastor, senior pastor, Pastor Lanny, and Lewis, and how God brought them at the right time, exactly where we needed them at this moment. And then the preparation that went into the listening sessions, which so many of you participated in, to share your ideas for the future, your thoughts of the past, and your excitement for what is. The ministry site profile that Pastor Steve looked at online, that Pastor Steve got connected with through the call committee. So the call committee led by Barry Doherty, the ministry site profile and that coming together through Mark Mesmer. The pandemic, wow, what an impact that that's had. And it's brought us to right now, to this moment, to all these beautiful, shiny eyes I see. <laughs> so wonderful and so blessed. And then, Pastor Steve, being called by God to this congregation. It's just a God thing, and God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yeah. Round of applause here. Okay, so I'm going to build off what Debbie's just been talking about, and the word that comes to mind is blessed. We, as a congregation, have been so blessed over the years, but we are very blessed today to welcome Pastor Steve Cauley as our new senior pastor here at Living Lord. Pastor Steve's knowledge, his leadership, and his ministry experience are going to be a blessing to us as we work together to serve God, to serve our congregation, and to serve our community in the days to come. We are also very excited and blessed to welcome his family next month. Uh, we are very excited to have them be this wonderful addition to the Living Lord family. So Pastor Steve, we hope to be a blessing to you. We will be supporting you. We will be encouraging you. We will be praying for you. 
as you begin your ministry with us as we build the body of Christ together. We will be here for you in the days, weeks, and months ahead as we learn what the plan is that God has for us. So with that, we in Living Lord like to do, you know, big welcome and, and fellowship in, prior to the pandemic. So because of the pandemic, we've had to get a little bit more creative in how we've welcomed you into our family. Um, so we've asked the congregation to please send gift cards of welcome and encouragement and, and notes that you can pass on to Pastor Steve and his family as they begin their transition here. And um, this is just a small sample of what we've collected so far, um, all the gift cards and, and welcome notes. And actually, we're placing welcome notes on the Welcome Pastor Steve board out there. So please feel free to continue to send your notes in over the next few days and weeks ahead. And I also have a little, I didn't show this last night, but we also have a little apparel for you and your family, just in case, you know, um, you need a little Living Lord apparel. Um, and then uh, we would like to invite all of you to share in a little bit of a special fellowship after the service today to say hello to Pastor Steve. We have, in true St. Louis style, gooey butter cookies out there for everybody to enjoy. So please make sure you stick around after the service and welcome Pastor Steve. And then post-pandemic, I've been told German chocolate cake and any sort of cream pie may be the right fellowship we have um, in the future. So again, welcome Pastor Steve. Turn it over to Lewis. Special thanks to everyone who was a part of that process, the congregation for, for being so welcoming, for the call committee and all that they've done, and for that ministry site profile team that put together the initial paperwork to get this journey started. So hats off to all of you on this new beginning, this new chapter in the life that we're living together as Living Lords Lutheran. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking a little bit about stewardship. We've also been talking about what it means to be building a culture of generosity here at Living Lord. We heard from Tom Fraze the first week. We heard from Rob Carruthers as well. This week, we're going to hear from Jean Priel and the ministry that she's a part of and that we as Living Lord are a part of and that we support. Uh, it's the Oasis Food Pantry, and I'll not spoil anything, so we'll watch the next video. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jean Priel. I am a member at Living Lord um, for the past 20 years. I am on the board at Oasis and represent Living Lord. Uh, my role at Oasis is um, communications. So when you read the newsletter from Living Lord and you see an article about Oasis, that would be from me. Working with Oasis is really opened my eyes to other people's issues, problems, people that need help, people that are in a different situation in life than perhaps I am. I, I feel very um, humbled to fill bags with groceries and walk those bags outside and put those in someone's car and have that person tell me, um, you know, what a blessing it is to them. So there are, have been for many years a lot of volunteers at Oasis um, from Living Lord uh, we have two different um, openings that Living Lord's responsible for, a Tuesday night and a Saturday morning. And I think um, of my Tuesday night team as being part of uh, my Living Lord, but also part of my Oasis family. I think it's really important uh, when we have a board meeting, we are all from different churches, and uh, the people that are at the board meeting are, are so... Um, anxious and want to help the people in our community and so it's very ecumenical and I love seeing um, us all pulling together as Christians to lift our community up. I think it's the way we really need to live every day. So we, we do receive information um, on our services back from clients and this was a client that was very much impacted as to how they were treated at the pantry so I'd like to share that with everyone. To the sponsors, workers, volunteers, and all those responsible for the Oasis Food Pantry, this note is just to say thank you. 
Thank you so much for your kindness. I have donated to pantries in the past, but for the first time in my life, I find myself and my husband in need of help in various areas, as well as grocery pantries. I have never been treated so kindly by any organization as I was on my visit to your pantry this past Thursday. I just thought you deserved to know because your kindness, I felt as though I was shopping at a grocery store and none of you made me feel ashamed for being there. I really appreciate the service you provide and those who provide the service to help those in need. Um, so right now at Oasis, um, we've had a lot of changes because of the pandemic. We've had to revise our food delivery process. Um, many of the food drives, canned food drives, um, were suspended uh, from last year. So if you would like to do a food drive, that would be really helpful. Uh, we also lost a lot of our volunteers. Uh, many were seniors and very dedicated, but due to the pandemic, have just had to step back. So volunteering at the food pantry would be helpful. Um, any um, project, um, a lot of projects that are at the pantry are maintaining the buildings that we own. Um, those are, you know, if you have a trade or a skill, that might be something you could donate some hours to help work on the buildings or do some repairs. If you've been to the Oasis Food Pantry, or if you haven't, it's just an incredible ministry that we're a part of and part of the ministry that we do in our greater community. Pastor Lanny and I, this last February, did have a chance to go and visit and see all of the work that goes into uh, the Oasis Food Pantry and how dedicated those people are uh, to bettering the lives and helping those who are in need. Uh, again, it's just one of the ways that we at Living Lord, with what we give, are able to then give to our community in ways that we might not even be aware of. And now more than ever, especially during the pandemic when job security isn't a guarantee anymore, this food pantry, uh, along with all the other food pantries in the area, have become more crucial and so it, it's just touching, at least for me, to know that we at Living Lord are able to help secure food for our community. With that, our final announcement is that Baby Watch 2020 has come to an end. It's a celebratory weekend. It's a weekend that we welcome Pastor Steve and that our Living Lord family continues, and it's also the continuation of our family, and so our family grew also just a little bit bigger this week. This is Theodore Paul Molman, who was born on Wednesday at about 240, 6 pounds, 10 ounces, so a little bit smaller than I had put my bets on, uh, but he's long. He's about 21 inches long, so hopefully he's a tall boy, but not taller than me. <laughs> With that, let us stand and worship God. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another with a wave and peace sign. God's work all hands working together. To repairing the world, raising up poor, planting new gardens, feeding the hungry and sheltering the cold. Bless God our hands as we work in your name, sharing the good news of your gospel. God's work our feet, traveling to is unknown, walking as friends, marching for freedom, running a race with God's future, the goal. Bless God our feet as we follow your way, sharing the good news of your gospel. God's work our voice. Singing together, praising, proclaiming to all who will hear. Praying for peace, shouting for justice, claiming God's love for the lost and the least. Bless God. 
God, our voice as we speak in your name, sharing the good news of your gospel. God is at work in and around us, feelings of routing and bread on the rise, wash and set free, humble and honest, gifted by grace we respond in God's love. Bless God our lives as we answer your call, sharing the good news of your gospel, sharing the of your gospel, sharing the good news of your gospel. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our faith in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on us, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away, 
my heart will choose to say. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. I'm new here. So I always take the position that I am learning as a student. So I, it's good to be here. I'm Steve Cauley, and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to serve God together as we reach out to this hurt and broken world with the good news of Jesus Christ. This morning, uh, I, knew, I know we've got some kids over here. Any other kids on this side? There's a couple over here. And Lewis, where did he go? There he is, okay. Well, I brought with me, um, you may know this, and Lewis, you're going to really need one of these pretty quick. Anybody know what this is? A piggy bank. Boys and girls, have you seen one of these? I want to see your hands. If you have or have seen one, what do you do with piggy banks? You put money in, right? But the question is, what do you do with that money, right? So what do you save money for, or for what do you save money? Trips? Okay. Boys and girls, there's only four things that you can do with money. That's it. Four. That's it. That's all you can do. You can save your money, right? You can spend your money. You can be generous with your money and give. And you can invest your money. Anybody have a fifth way to use money? That's it. Right? Money's a tool. It's not the end all or be all, but we save it so that we might purchase something or invest something or give some money. So we're talking about building this culture of generosity. That's simply a fancy word for being kind, being respectful of other people, sharing what God has given to us. Right? So of all the things that we, we do with our money, one of the things that, for me, is most fun is sharing it being a blessing to other people. And so when you think about some of those things that you're using that piggy bank for, remember those four things that you can do with it. You can spend it, you can give it, you can invest it, and you can save it, all of which are important things to do. So let us continue building that culture of generosity, particularly with our younger people, as we are taught how to be good and generous disciples of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And keep saving those piggy banks. Lewis, I'll get you one for Theodore. If you don't already have one. Might need a couple. <laughs> Good. Optim. Yeah, college. College. Saving for college. Saving. Just make sure the saving section's really, really big. Our first lesson this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians. We, give, we always give thanks to God for all you, all of you, and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit 
and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has, surrounded, has sounded forth from not only you in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Here ends our lesson. We stand for the gospel. Also, just... Sorry, sorry, we're going to try this again, because pregnancy brain. I can't use that excuse much longer. Kids, I want to dismiss you off to Children's Church. You see Mr. Skip back there. Be sure to follow him. Shane. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from the 22nd chapter of Matthew's Gospel. The scripture reads, Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus and what he would say. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought Jesus a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they heard this. They were amazed. And they left Jesus and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things I always think about why church is important is because we, like if you go to the gym, you do certain exercises. And it's no different in what a church, a faith community, tries to do for you and for us. Spiritual practices. Whether or not you realize it, we are engaging in the practice of a spiritual practice right now through a corporate worship, right? So there's one. One spiritual practice. As a pastor, I always try to lift up, there are seven spiritual practices that I lift up. Worship, study, invite, give, serve, um, and pray, and encourage. Seven. As we practice our faith together, we grow deeper in these seven faith practices. Today, as you know, we are talking about building a culture of generosity. That falls under giving, right? I shared with the children this morning, uh, one of the things that as disciples of Jesus we are called to do is to be generous 
with the resources, as Jesus says, belongs to God. Giving is the basis of our stewardship. You may know, and if you don't, stewardship is a word that we say belongs to God. In that fact, you and I are stewards of what God has given you. I want you to look around here this morning, and I want you to take note of everything that you see, every element, everything you see in this sanctuary, even outside the sanctuary, all comes from planet Earth, right? There is nothing from Mars that we know of. Everything exists here is a gift from God including the wood that was made so that you are sitting, the cushions, everything is from God, and it, it goes to God. All you and I are are stewards of these resources. All that we have and all that we are come from our Creator. We are motivated in giving because of the grace of God as a result of putting our trust and our hope in what God is doing. I know God is up to something here. It's not without coincidence that the week the new pastor arrives, there's also a new birth. God's up to something here. There is more than a coincidence going on, folks. I mean, the baby could have been born early, right? But it all happened, it all happened in the same week. I think there's a little bit more than a coincidence. That's a God moment. Amen? So this giving. There is a strong connection between a believer's heart and being generous. Generous giving has a spiritual discipline helps us grow closer to Christ. Help us grow closer in our relationship with God. You probably heard the saying, we are blessed to be a blessing, right? We just heard it this morning, talking about blessing. I want to share with you the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. Do you know that story? Yes, you do. Was Ebenezer a good person, a villain, or what was Ebenezer? It was a Scrooge, right? <laughs> That's how you get that term Scrooge from comes from uh, a story that uh, comes out, uh, popular at least around Christmas time, a, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. The point here is that the character is a tight-fisted, greedy person by the name of Ebenezer Scrooge. And this guy despises everything that brings people joy and happiness. He doesn't give of himself emotionally, financially, and he is convinced that life will be fuller by keeping everything for himself and hoarding everything rather than giving and sharing. When you think about giving and sharing, there are really two ditches. One is hoarding, right, on one side of the road, and the other is just giving away and being foolish with your resources. That's not what we're talking about. Most of us are in the center on the road, right? Some of us may, may keep a little bit more, some of us may give a little bit more, but healthy stewardship is a balance between giving, spending, saving, and investing. So this Scrooge guy, three ghosts come to him, the ghost of the past, the present, and the future. It's then that Scrooge is haunted by the vision that he sees. After this long life that he has been given, he sees a vision where he will die alone, surrounded by all his hordes of whatever, money, all the stuff that he had accumulated, and he knew he didn't want to die on his deathbed with all this stuff around him. How many of you have sat around stuff and watched the loved one die? None of us, I hope. Stuff? We sit with people we love, right? I've sat at the deathbed of many people, and I've yet to see somebody surrounded by all these possessions. It's true, you know, the saying that at least George Strait, because I'm from Texas, he talked about, I've never seen a U-Haul on a hearse. We just don't take it with us, folks. And here's the good news. You don't need it anyway. You don't need it. 
So let me expand this morning on six principles of biblical giving and dimensions that we talk about, and at least the Bible lifts up as being generous givers. By the way, when I say giving, I'm not necessarily talking about the church. I'm talking about you as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I believe God will provide for the mission of God's church. If we grow our discipleship, that will follow. Right? You may be generous to the Humane Society. There's all different kinds of ways to be generous. It's not just in the church. Pick a couple and be generous. Plan your giving. I'll come back to that in a minute. First of all, the Bible talks about being joyful, right? The opposite of Scrooge. We give back joyfully because of what God has done through us. We give because it's fun to give. As the Bible teaches us, it's what giving is actually what brings us joy. Acts 25, excuse me, Acts 20, verse 25 Probably you know this verse, and you may not know that you know it, but you know it. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That comes from the Bible. A lot of people in the culture say that, and they may not know where it comes from, but that comes from the book of Acts. Giving brings joy. If you've ever had a child and watched the joy that child is expressed at a joy, um, on receiving a gift, you know. I want you to think back for a time when you gave a gift and you were excited for the other person or the organization to receive the gift. When you give a gift, it brings joy to the receiver, which in turn brings joy to your own life. You see, part of following Jesus is giving yourself away for the sake of God's kingdom. Giving, then, is an outward sign of inward spiritual maturity. I trust that God will provide. And giving, of course, is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit that Paul talks about in Galatians 3. So give joyfully. Give cheerfully. Don't give out of obligation, right? We lift up law and gospel. We're not giving because we're commanded to give. We have grace. We give because of God's graciousness. The second point is regularly. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, on the first day of the week, you should put aside a portion of the money that you have earned. Giving regularly is like going to the gym. If you go once a week or once a month or once a year, doesn't do you a whole lot of good, right? The benefit is there, but it may not be as good as if you practice this thing regularly. Make giving a habit in your life. There's only four things you can do with that money, those resources. I think what the Bible's trying to say is don't give God your leftovers. Right? Don't wait until the end of the month when you paid everything else and then decide to give. It's not what the Bible lifts up. Proverbs 3, verse 9 teaches, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. Giving doesn't happen by accident. Plan it out. Don't wait until you're at the bottom of the barrel to give. You won't have anything left, and you will be robbing yourself of the joy that comes with giving. The third thing the Bible lifts up is give proportionally. I want you to think about all the stuff you have, all the things in your house. Maybe you even have a little pocket change like I do in my pocket. You have food in your cupboards. Not everybody's blessed with that. You may have been to parts of the world where they don't have that. I know I have. I struggle just to get by one more day. My point is that we are more than blessed with ample resources. We are very wealthy, regardless of how you feel about it. You're wealthy. The Bible talks about tithes and offerings, and your tithes are those first fruit gifts that are the 10% off the top. That's the Old Testament that teaches that's the minimum standard. But we are freed in Jesus Christ. The New Testament teaches us we are free to give, not out of the law, but out of God's grace. Yes, the world's needs are very great, 
But I think our need to give is even greater. Because there's a story in the Bible about a man named Zacchaeus. Do you remember that story? I learned it in vacation Bible school. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. So what happens? Jesus comes to Jericho. He walks right up to this man who was short in stature, is the word the Bible uses. Zacchaeus was so short, literally, that he was hiding in a tree. And Luke 19, verse 8 says, Zacchaeus stood there and said, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give. Half, 50% to the poor. And he doesn't stop there. Zacchaeus says, you know what? And if I've defrauded anyone, I will give even four times that amount. Here's the point of that story that Luke is trying to make. The gospel of Jesus Christ should change our habits and our actions. It should transform us from taking to giving. Because in the end, it doesn't matter how much you give, but rather what matters, according to the Bible, is the percentage, how much. There's a lot of people who have a lot who give a little bit, proportionally. The fourth thing is give generously. And by that I mean when you hand over an offering, it's no longer your money, it's ours. Right? Don't expect anything back in return when you give. You will live your life in want. And when you decide to give, you, a little voice, which is natural, it's a law of economics, might tell you, I can't afford to do this. That little voice comes up in all of our heads, right? There are limited resources. We all know that, particularly in this age and time. It's a fear of not having enough. It's a pervasive fear. It's a natural force that we all feel. Remind yourself of the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field, the nature. Consider the lilies of the field that are adorned in all of God's glory. Not even King Solomon. Solomon the king, when wealth ran, when gold flowed like water in the Israelite kingdom. Not even the richest king, Solomon, was adorned as one of these lilies in the field. So if God clothes the grass of the field, will not God also take care of you? Give compassionately. Do you remember the book All I Ever Really Needed to Learn? I learned in kindergarten. I've read it three times. I have three uh, young children. The theme throughout that book, the point of that is sharing. Right? If you have young children, you probably remember how they like to hoard stuff, take it, and don't share it. I know that lesson very well. That's the whole point. That's why we have that book for kindergarten students. I know we have some educators here. That's why we use that book. The point is to help people share. Why? Because humans aren't good at sharing, right? We're just not born good, and we have to be taught how to share. And that's where the church can help us cultivate some of those spiritual gifts of sharing. In a lot of ways, that book is the exact same as the gospel. Sharing. Sharing the love, the grace of Jesus Christ. We share that together to each other. Finally, posthumously. If giving brings you great joy in this life, why not bless something when you are gone? The world won't stop when I'm gone. I want to bless it even after I'm no longer here. Consider giving posthumously. If giving gave great joy in your life, as I hope it does, may it be a blessing even after you and I are gone. Finally, give because you love the mission of this congregation, not because we have bills to pay. God will take care of that. We're concerned about building up the discipleship, building each other up. Give because you believe in the mission. You believe in the love that is shared in this congregation. Give because you love to give and be consistent in life and in death. Will you pray with me? God of abundance, we gather today as disciples who 
seek your guidance as we continue to follow your call to be generous and compassionate stewards of all that you have given us. Lord, we ask that you would bless us so that we may be a blessing to this community, this community in which you have called this congregation. Bless us as we seek to serve you in all that we do, all that we say, and all that we are. It's in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the whole church on earth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your faithful servants. Lord, in your mercy. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. 
from the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. We pray this week especially for Marcy and Dennis, Matt, Andy, Jack, Jean, Greg, Shirley, and those we name before you now. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, courts, officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. For we see the life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. shed your blood, and we remember your wondrous love, you gave your body, you shed your blood. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Come now and taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Just a quick reminder to our communion procedures here. As you are ushered up the diagonal aisles, be sure to stay socially distanced and keep your masks on. You'll approach the trays. You'll grab a double-stacked cup. You'll have the bread, the gluten-free wafer in the bottom. You'll have wine or grape juice, your choice. You'll come over to where I, or I believe Chet will be standing, since Pastor Steve is going to be out in the gathering space. We'll give you the blessing. You'll then separate the cups, lower your mask, take of the elements, and then you'll be exited out the outside aisles. I hope you can stay afterwards. There will be fellowship. Please introduce yourself to Pastor Steve as well so he gets to know who you are, even though it might be from the bridge of the nose up. With that, we'll have our final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fail, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed
I want to know 